Today we're going to be looking at electrical circuits. Now the first part we're going to do is we're going to demonstrate Ohm's law. So that's V equals I R. Here what I have is just a 300 turn coil. Um, I've chosen this because it's, um, and, and this will make sense later, but um, it's important that this component stays at a low temperature while I push current through it. Okay, um, and the reason why I chose this is because this actually um, is able to give me um, this is able to give me a voltage and current reading while staying at a relatively low temperature. If I used something like a light bulb, um, so something like this, this would give me difficult readings because um, of the fact that things in reality are not ohmic resistors, which means resistors in reality do not follow Ohm's law perfectly. So we try to keep the resistor, or the thing that's um, producing the resistor, the thing that provides the resistance, we try to keep that component, keep the temperature of that component as low as possible. Okay? So that's why I've chosen this. Now the first step is to measure its resistance at room temperature, which I'll go ahead and do now. So I'm just connecting, so the yellow leads are connected to the coil, and I'm just connecting this up to my multimeter. And the multimeter reads 2.6, no, 2.5 ohms. Oh, 2.4. Just got to wait for it to settle. That's about right, 2.4 ohms. Now, one thing to note is when you're using a multimeter, you have to be careful to um, try to remove the, scratch the surface of the metals of it if you haven't used your multimeter in a while, because it forms like an oxide layer on top of it, and that affects your reading. So, just minimizing measurement error here. I'm just making sure my alligator clips um, scratch into the metal surface and that will give me a much more accurate resistance reading. So I'm getting 2.4 ohms at room temperature for my coil. Okay? Now, um, that should be, that's my ohm meter, my multimeter set to the resistance is an ohm meter. Um, now let's connect it up to our power supply and see whether Ohm's law is true. So I'm just connecting it up and let's push some volts through it. We'll push uh, let's just say push 4 volts. Should I set it to 4? We're pushing 4 volts and we're getting 1.71 amps of current. Okay? V equals IR. Now, if I have, uh, let's make I the subject because I is actually the dependent variable. How much current you get through the coil depends on what, how much volts you're pushing through the coil. So if we make I the subject, it's I equals V on R. So, according to our resistance reading of 2.4 ohms that we calculated before, that we measured before, if we push 4 volts through, 4 divided by 2.4, we should be getting 1.6667 ohms. Um, as you'll see on the, uh, the power meter, um, you see that the amount of current that's actually being pushed through is about 1.67. 1.67. It was 1.68 before. I don't know why it dropped to 1.67. So, that indicates that Ohm's law you know, so far applies. Let's try another data point. And, and obviously, if you're doing this experiment at school, you would graph that down, and that's one data point on your graph of um, voltage on the x-axis, current on the, on the y-axis, okay? Because current is the dependent variable, and voltage is the independent variable. So you put voltage on the independent variable, the x-axis, and current on the y-axis, and you would graph that. That's one data point. Let's try a different voltage, okay? Let's push more volts through it. Let's push five volts. If we're pushing 5 volts, we are getting 2.06 amps through. Now, um, with our calculator, um, I equals V on R, once again, if we're pushing 5 volts in, 5 divided by 2.4, we should be getting 2.0833. Instead, we're only getting 2.04 amps. Okay, so we're expecting 2.0833 amps, we're actually getting 2.04 amps. So you see there's a current the current is sort of a bit lower than what we're expecting. And that's because the temperature, this thing's actually warming up and I can feel it. When resistors, when all resistors in, in reality, when they warm up, the resistance actually decreases. So the, the resistance of this now is actually slightly more than 2.4 ohms. And this is one part of the experiment that you actually need to write down in the discussion. You have to understand what a non-ohmic resistor is. Okay? Um, so anyway, uh, that's another, that's another data point, and also you'll see that it's, uh, the current's actually dropping over time because the resistance is increasing. It's actually at 2 amps now. 5 volts only pushes 2 amps through the coil now um, because the coil is obviously heating up. I'll disconnect it, let it cool down. 
just to allow us to get better results um, for the next one. But that's for your second data point. Okay, so voltage of five pushes two amps through through the coil. Okay. Um, now let's try a different data point. Let's push six through. Let's push six volts through. At six volts, what we expect is six divided by because V on R equals I. Six divided by two point four. We should be getting 2.5 amps. Instead, we're only getting 2.37 amps. So this is uh, the, the the effect of this being a non-ohmic resistor. This is what's happening: is that the temperature is increasing, that's causing the resistance to increase. But nevertheless, you graph what you actually see. You would put it on your graph, and you have your third data point. Keep doing this until you have enough data points. You will see that um, you'll notice it's sort of like a curve instead of a straight line, which is what you'd expect from a relationship like V equals I R. R being the gradient, um, instead you see a curve, and it curves uh, like a concave down type of curve. The reason is because resistance is increasing uh, with temperature, with the as this heats up, as the um, resistor heats up. Okay, so that demonstrates uh, Ohm's law. It's an approximation. In reality, uh, resistors are an approximation of an ohmic resistor, so we get a good approximation of Ohm's law happening. You know, V equals IR is a good approximation. Next thing I'll demonstrate is what happens in the extreme case when the resistor we're using heats up to a very high temperature. And an easy way to demonstrate is by using a light bulb. So as I mentioned earlier, light bulbs are not a good resistor to use for this experiment because their temperature increases so much when you push current through it. And that's, that's why it's a light bulb because the filament in the light bulb it relies on the fact that it gets really hot and emits light, and that's how light bulbs work. So, um, anyway, I'll demonstrate. At room temperature, when the light bulb is off, what is the resistance? Let's uh, determine that now. So, I have my ohm meter here. All I have to do is just poke this in and just make sure I get a good grab on it. And just wait until it stabilizes. 2.6 ohms. Okay, I'm satisfied it's about 2.6 ohms at room temperature. And what happens when I push some current through? By the way, these components are not polarized. I can actually, uh, it doesn't matter whether I connect it you know, red to black or red to red, doesn't matter. Non-polarized means it doesn't, the, the direction of the current going through doesn't affect the operation of the component. So, uh, let's push something reasonable, maybe three volts. These are rated up to six volts. Fine tune it. Right. Three volts. Three volts only pushes 0 0.17 amps. What does that imply? If we use Ohm's law on these two bits of information, three volts only pushes 0 0.17 volts in. Push that into Ohm's law. V equals IR. So make R the subject, because that's what we're trying to find. So I equals to V on V on I. Sorry, R, R for rabbit, R for resistance, equals to V on I. So, V is 3, divided by 0 0.17 is I. The resistance is actually 17.264 uh, ohms. 17.64. Okay? Uh, we measured 2.6 ohms. So, what that indicates is, just only by pushing 3 volts into the light bulb, the resistance of the filament has jumped to 17.64 ohms. And the reason why the reason for this is clear. If you look at the light bulb, it's actually glowing orange white hot already. Even at three volts, this the temperature on this is probably two thousand degrees. Okay, um, I don't know exactly how hot. You need to look at black body radiation curves. That's that's in year twelve, by the way. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it jumped. The temperature increased from room temperature to something like two thousand degrees, and that's what explains the sudden increase in, in resistance from two point six ohms when we measured it in at room temperature to 17.64 ohms and we'll see the, in, the temperature, we'll see the, the resistance increase as we continue to increase the temperature of the light bulb. For example, we're pushing 3 volts into it right now. Let's, uh, let's push it up to uh, maybe 5 volts, uh, 6 volts. Push it up to 6 volts and we're getting 0 0.24 amps. So, um, V on I equals R, once again. So 6 divided by 0 0.24, I get 25. 25 ohms. Now, the filament 
has a resistance of 25 ohms. So before, at room temperature, it's only 2.6 ohms. Then when I was pushing three volts into it, it had 17.6 ohms. And then now when I'm pushing double the volts, which is six volts, I'm getting a resistance of 25 ohms. And again, it's obvious because by looking at the filament's color, it's probably at 3000 degrees now. Actually, I, I don't know, <laughs> uh, probably 2500 or, or something or other. Probably tungsten gets, um, starts to boil soon after that, starts to melt rather soon after that. Um, but uh, so that, that demonstrates the, the fact that light, light bulb is a very good, a light bulb is a very good um, example of a non-ohmic resistor. Everything in real life, everything in reality are non-ohmic resistors. And that's why when I use the coil to demonstrate Ohm's law, we didn't get a perfect straight line because this is also a non-ohmic resistor. But we use this to, for that experiment because it didn't heat up nowhere near enough compared to a light bulb.